Good afternoon, everyone. This is Martha Spies I'm with Peace Action Maine. Welcome to our meeting and thank you so much for joining us. Our first speaker today is Reverend Dr. Liz Theo Harris, and she will be introduced by Reverend Kilmer. Take it away, Reverend Kilmer. <clears throat> Thanks, Martha. Um, this is so much fun for me. Uh, I, I, I have known Liz since uh, she was eight. And so it's been, um, it's been, uh, it's fabulous to think that I am int introducing a very well-known person who's, who has proved herself in so many ways. Um, I've known her family for, the, for that long a period of time. I should say all three children in that family have PhDs. And so that says a lot about who they are. Um, Liz's father wrote a, a really very well-known book on J. Edgar Hoover. And her mom was a very, very special person who played a, a very major role within the Presbyterian Church and National Council of Churches, where I had the honor, really, of working with her uh, in a variety of important justice and peace issues. Um, the Reverend Dr. Liz Theo Harris is co-chair of the Poor People's Campaign, a national call for moral revival. She's co-chair with the Reverend Dr. William Barber II. She is the director of the Cairo Center for Religions, Rights, and Social Justice at Union Theological Seminary. She is an ordained minister in the Presbyterian Church USA and teaches at Union Theological Seminary in New York. Uh, Liz is the editor. I just got a note about recording some progress. That's good. Uh, Liz is the editor of We Cry Justice, Reading the Bible with the Poor People's Campaign. She's author of Always With Us, What Jesus Really Said About the Poor, and co-author of Revive Us Again, Vision and Action in Moral Organizing. In 2021, she received the Hunger Leadership Award from the Congressional Hunger Center, along with um, William Barber. In 2020, she was named one of the faith leaders to watch by the Center for American Progress. In 2019, she was a Selma Bridge Award recipient and named one of 11 women shaping the church by Sojourners Magazine. In 2018, she gave the Building a Moral Movement TED Talk at TED Women was named one of the political 50 thinkers, doers, and visionaries whose ideas are driving politics, and was also named the Women of Faith Award recipient by the Presbyterian Church USA. Liz received her BA in Urban Studies from the University of Pennsylvania, her MDiv degree from Union Theological Seminary, where she was the first William Sloan Coffin Scholar, which is an honor in itself, and her PhD from Union in New Testament and Christian Origins. It is certainly my pleasure and, and my honor, really, to introduce you to Liz Theo Harris and to welcome her to Maine. Thanks, Liz, for being here. Well, thank you so much, um, Reverend Rich Kelmer and, and to the Maine Poor People's Campaign and to everybody in um, Maine that's with us today on May Day, this International um, Workers' Day, this day of peace and justice and proclaiming it and, and solidarity across the world. Um, it's really great to be with you all, and I have great love and great respect for the powerful organizing that's happening. Um, all across the country, including um, in Maine. And as Rich was saying, I, I, I grew up in a family that was deeply dedicated to, um, to doing peace and to peace action. Um, and I grew up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and we were a part of uh, peace action in Milwaukee. And um, 
And so I, I reach out in solidarity to, to everyone in Maine, um, you know, with, with, uh, with strong uh, feelings of, of solidarity and love and, and compassion and, um, and justice. Uh, so, so I want to talk today ab about um, why the Poor People's Campaign, um, a national call for moral revival, and why the the Mass Poor People and Low Wage Workers Assembly and Moral March on Washington into the polls on June 18th is all about um, peace, peace action, justice, and uh, a moral revival um, to, to make things right um, and to overcome injustice. Um, you know, and I want to start a little bit with what's going on in the world right now. Um, uh, if we just look at uh, the 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 war and wars that are happening across our planet, um, we are indeed uh, closer to nuclear annihilation than we have been um, uh, in in my lifetime. Um, if we look at uh, the attacks on democracy in the United States and across the world, um, we are in no ways going forward. We're only going back. If we uh, take seriously the climate crisis and the impact of ecological devastation, um, especially on, on the poor across the world, but really on everybody, um, uh, we, we must take seriously the fact that um that that we cannot take for granted uh that we have an earth um or life living in and on it um because indeed um our existence is at threat um and we live in the richest country in the world um in the richest country in human history and yet there are 140 million people uh who are poor or one healthcare crisis job loss um uh storm uh, or small emergency from absolute economic war ruin. Um, and, and, and we in the Poor People's Campaign and, and many of us that have been in the peace and justice movement for, for a long time and others that are just joining uh, more recently, you know, see um, and understand that if we're serious about uh, addressing systemic racism, systemic poverty, ecological devastation, militarism, and this distorted nor narrative of, of religious, especially Christian nationalism, that we can't get rid of one um, without, without addressing all of them. Um, and that the, the, the real way to address all of those issues is by building a movement, a moral movement from the bottom up. Um, and so that is what people thousands and thousands of people all across this country are doing. Um, and it stands on the shoulders and arm in arm with so much important um, work that's happening all across the, the country and world. Um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the cost, the cost of the levels of inequality and war and ecological devastation, um, rather than the, the costs of actually addressing those problems. Um, Again, in the United States, uh, we um, spend 53 cents of every discretionary dollar, 54 cents actually these days, on, on war and militarism, um, and less than 15 on healthcare and education and childcare programs and other anti-poverty efforts um, combined. And just last week, the Wall Street Journal um, proposed that we should actually double the military budget, um, which is already at $800 billion. Um, uh, and, and yet, um, uh, you know, and that budget, which was, which was passed with a, a very strong bipartisan consensus, um, with, you know, uh, actually billions more dollars in it than the Pentagon even asked for, um, that, that, that budget already, um, uh, you know, as we had the poor people's campaign have been saying needs to be cut, um, at least in half. Um, and probably a whole lot more. Um, so to have, um, you know, at the same time as, uh, you know, our nation has failed to extend a child tax credit, has failed to invest in climate resilient jobs, um, has failed to, to actually um, make sure that it has allowed, you know, 4 million children to be thrown back under the poverty line um, when we have the solutions at hand to actually address. Um, uh, to then be be you know standing at uh, at a moment and and looking at a horizon um, and a and a world 
and po political rulers um, and leaders who who are asserting that we we need to double down on even more militarism, on even more war, on even more violence. Um, uh, that is a very scary um, position to be in, um, and one as Dr. King talks about um, a, a nation that is approaching a, a spiritual death. Um, so I want us to think about this this idea of 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 those costs, the the monetary costs of of a, of a war economy of of twenty one trillion dollars um, since nine eleven into militarism and detention and deportation and mass incarceration um, and war um, and and yet you know uh, uh, you know no, you know very minimal investments even in a pandemic. Um, in terms of lifting the load of poverty, actually addressing systemic racism, protecting our democracy, and 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 making sure that we have a planet um, that is uh, protected, um, uh, what it's going to take to be able to change uh, uh, those costs into to seeing actually that uh, what we need is. Uh, you know, investments in all of those things, and that it's actually costing our nation and our world way too much to have both this inequality, but also this militarism and these militarized communities, and and uh, and you know, big polluters. Uh, and instead, we, you know, it, that those costs are too much, um, and that in fact we have to, you know, change um, our our very priorities and and what we know it's going to take, because um, what it has taken in the past and what it's taking today is, is a movement. Um, people coming together and organizing together and, and putting forward uh, that it does not have to be this way. And that indeed we, we can um, you know, build from the bottom up and we can uh, actually declare that everybody should have a right to live um, and does have a right to live. And uh, that means to live in a, a planet that is healthy and peaceful. Um, so, so that then brings us to to thinking a little bit about um, how we in the Poor People's Campaign talk about that we are not trying just to curse the darkness. Um, we're not just trying to point out all the things that are wrong with society, though they are many, um, but instead shine a light on what is possible, what is at hand, and and what must be done. Um, so. You know, back uh, when we first launched the campaign, we put forward a moral agenda that that talked about, uh, you know, healthcare and living wages, and uh, strong, you know, social welfare programs. It talked about investing in education and in housing, and in, um, uh, you know, all, all types of the things that people need to thrive and not just barely survive. Uh, we we made the connection between. Uh, you know, building up the infrastructure of our democracy as long as as well as an infrastructure of our roads and bridges and and uh, uh, water systems. Um, we made connections between uh, funding and supporting education and HBCUs um, and uh, you know trade schools um, as well as we um, uh, you know built up. Uh, uh, understanding and a um, and a power that embraced the protection of indigenous and native communities, um, of immigrant um, families, of of really uh, everyone that makes up this society, and and then when we put this agenda together, we we said, well, how do we make this um, happen? And and we we showed we put together a poor people's moral budget, and we said, you know. Again, the, the costs of, of this level of inequality are, are too great, but if, if we were to, to cut the military budget in half, if we were to invest in programs of social uplift, and if we were to have a fair taxation system, then this would more than um, uh, pay for all of the demands that poor and low-income people are making, that people of, of faith and of justice and of peace are, are making. And, and, and then we've kept on organizing. And, and last year we introduced a, a uh, uh, third reconstruction resolution um, into into Congress, and and in that resolution we talk about um, you know banning a nuclear proliferation. We talk about um, all kinds of demands connected to to militarism and the kind of demilitarization of our communities, and then the putting of those resources 
um, you know, back into the things that our communities need, but also in diplomacy and in peace and in, in justice. And, and, and again, uh, you know, what's, what's so clear to us is that, that we actually have the solutions at hand. There is no scarcity of, of resources. There is no uh, scarcity of ideas. Right now, there's a scarcity of the political will and moral consciousness of our elected leaders to actually do what is just and right and peaceful. Um, but, and so th that's where we come in. Um, and so, so the, the call that I'm putting out and that I know that Peace Action has already taken up is for us to organize and mobilize and organize and mobilize and, and build a, a movement um, from below um, that is led by those that are most impacted by injustice, um, but, but crosses many different, really all the lines that divide us, you know, whether that's race or religion or geography, whether that's um, sexuality or gender or issue area, whether that's race or, or ethnicity or, uh, or age, um, we, we all are seeing people come together um, uh, from Alabama to Alaska, from, from the Bronx to the border, um, and from all the different uh, towns and cities um, across Maine uh, to, to say that somebody's been hurting our people. It's gone on for far too long. Somebody's been funding the war. It's gone on for far too long. Someone's been uh, violating our communities and it's gone on far too long. Someone's been been uh, uh, poisoning the water and the air and it's gone on far too long and we won't be, we can't be silent anymore. And so I wanna invite everyone here to join us. We have a powerful delegation coming from Maine to the poor people, mass poor people and low wage workers assembly and moral march on Washington into the polls. I know there are folks here that can, that can share information about getting on buses that'll be going from Maine and joining us in Washington, DC. What we know is that when we look at history and when we look at today, that, that we need a, a gathering, a declaration of the kind of power we're trying to build, that we have to shine a light on, on, on the stories and the solutions that are at hand. Those people who are most impacted by uh, injustice and, and the lack of peace and violence in the society, but who are, who are saying it, it, it it's going to stop and we're going to we're going to make a difference and and i again really would would invite everyone here to join and and look forward to being in discussion and dialogue with you all um as we build um this this movement as we build this work um uh as we as we put out this call that everybody's got a right to live and as we move as we say in our work move forward together and not one step back so so I'm, I'm looking forward to being in conversation with you all. I'm, I'm looking forward to, to keeping on working with everyone um, and uh, a happy May Day to everyone for sure. That was wonderful. Thank you so much, Reverend Liz. Do you have time to stick around for one or two questions? I do, I do. Um, anyone who has a question, could you put it in the, the uh, reactions under raise your hand? John, you've unmuted. Do you have a question? Yes, I do. I think I've unmuted. Uh, practical question. Great. Uh, I've heard it said there are buses going from Maine. I'd like some details when and where, when I can pick one up. I'm 77, but I'm double boosted. And as long as I test without symptoms beforehand, I'll get on the bus. <laughs> That's Amazing. a good question. John, I know for sure that Josh and Marcy are going to answer that question right after Liz's section. So um, that it, sounds good. There is one more question from Rosalie. Go ahead, Rosalie. Here on. Thank you, Martha. Thanks very much for that nice presentation. I think the Poor People's Campaign is where it's at. Um, I think you're the focal point for all of us to converge with. And um, what worries me is that while we know that if we could change the budget priorities, that there is plenty of money, those at the other end who won't even pay their fair share of tax, um, they need to be shown some kind of imaginative alternative to capitalism because they just won't wiggle 
as long as they think they can maintain their, their um, fortune. So I don't know at what point we become a threat. I think it's, that's what we look for because it's the only time we see change from, from Congress and the presidency is when, we, uh, when the people seem to be too big for their britches and too important. Anyway, I, I'm not coming to, to Washington, but I certainly am paying close attention. And um, thank you so much for all that the Poor People's Campaign is accomplishing. And I will be certainly a contributor and helper in different ways. Thank you. Well, thanks for that. And, and, and you know, I think um, my comment would be in, in relationship to the issues you were raising is that, that, you know, the Poor People's Campaign has put out two goals. Um, for our work. And we've basically said that once we accomplish those two goals, we can move on to others. But until we accomplish those two goals, they will be our goals. And, and the first is to shift the narrative, you know, to get our nation, get our world talking about who is poor, why people are poor, why it has to be this way, the solutions that are at hand, the resources that are there to, to actually do something about all of these different injustices, the nature of, of their interlockingness and, and, and why we need and are building an intersectional movement. But also um, the second goal is to then build power. Um, and you know, Dr. King had a lot of really important things to say about power. Um, but a couple of my favorites are, are exactly about um, what I heard you just mentioning. Um, so he says that power for poor people will me really mean having the, the assertiveness, the aggressiveness, and the ability to make the power structure say yes, when they may be desirous of saying no, right? And, and what we've seen for decades, um, especially when it comes to justice and peace policies, especially when it comes to the predicament that, that 140 million, almost half of the US population of poor people um, are experiencing, especially when it comes to this current attack on democracy and and you know all of the different kind of injustices that we're seeing right now is is we've been getting a lot of no um, we've no to extending the child tax credit no to expanding health care and e even in a the worst health care crisis in in generations you know no to a living wage increase um, or minimum wage increase, despite the fact that, you know, a vast majority of, of folks that voted in the 2020 election said they were supportive of, of $15 an hour, you know, and, and yet we haven't seen it. You know, we've, we've been getting no to, you know, climate resilient jobs and no to all of the kind of really issues. And again, it, it's not that people don't want it. I mean, if we, if we, if we look across the country, you know, the policies that I was just speaking about, you know, two thirds of the population, three quarters of the population are, are, are in complete support of all of those things. And yet those in power um, and, and kind of their enablers have, have allowed to just keep on saying no to all of that. But, but that's where movement and that's where organizing comes in. Um, and the next thing that Dr. King says kind of connected to, to what power looks like is he says it would be in the height of naivete for us to expect those in power to implore us for our programs. Um, and and he, what he keeps on going and he talks about then building up the kind of political will to, to, to make it so that those in power cannot elude our demands is what he says, right? And I think that that's what you were speaking to, like the, that we're going to be able to push forward, uh, you know, justice and peace. We're going to be able to, to change the priorities of this nation away from militarism and war and towards, you know, human flourishing and life, you know, if we're able to build compelling power um, uh, and, and, and to, you know, nonviolently, but very, you know, directly, uh, you know, confront um, those with power and and make it so that it's not possible to keep on saying no. And and I think that is what the Poor People's Campaign is about. That is what you know grassroots organizing and communities across the the country, including across Maine, is about. It's kind of building up that power and then putting forward and shining a light on the possibilities. Um, because again, uh, what what we can tell and what we know is that that um, 
there there is the the capacity there is the resources to actually address these problems and and to address them fully um, not even partially um but but right now we have to build up that political will to make it so and so that's where a movement of the people come in um we're not waiting for others to save us instead we're we're putting forward um that this can be done and, and we're going to make it happen and we're going to make it happen in a nonviolent um and you know a way that 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 lift you know one of the things that we say in our work is is when you lift from the bottom everybody rises and and that's you know exactly what what this campaign and our demands are all about wonderful okay thank you so much reverend liz and we know that you're busy so you perfectly um and welcome to join us for the rest of our meeting but we understand you're busy so we'll probably say goodbye and many many thanks Great. very thank much thank you so much Bye. thanks, thanks very much, much.